Hello, my name is Nisha Nadkarni, and I'm a senior Gen AI Specialist Solutions Architect at AWS. I work with Gen AI Builders to run large-scale training and inference on AWS. This is part two of our three-part series in which we will cover task governance on a shared cluster in SageMaker Hyperpod. Companies running a cluster of accelerated compute instances typically share their compute across several teams. In doing so, customers told us that they face challenges in allocating limited compute resources to different teams. In many cases, they would often either allocate too much or too little compute resources, often leading to idle compute. There are also a number of downstream effects for data scientists, including long waiting tasks, poor task prioritization, and limited visibility for data scientists across teams. As a result, businesses experience low compute utilization, decreased productivity, and increased costs. At reInvent 2024, AWS launched a new innovation for SageMaker Hyperpod called Task Governance, which addresses these pain points. With Task Governance, cluster administrators can dynamically allocate accelerated compute in a shared cluster and allows data scientists to utilize idle compute between teams thereby reducing wait times and enabling task prioritization. On top of that, task governance also enables you to observe utilization metrics in real time. So you can see GPU utilization in real time and also see which teams are borrowing nodes, running tasks, or have had preempted tasks. Many companies developing Gen AI in a shared cluster run into conflicts when sharing compute across a variety of tasks, teams, and priorities. SageMaker Hyperpod task governance lets administrators set quotas, borrowing limits, priorities, and preemption policies in a shared cluster. This enables the cluster to support a variety of tasks, including training, inference, fine tuning, and experimentation. By implementing these governance features, organizations can optimize compute resources and accelerate AI development processes. So let's jump into a demo of how task governance works. So let's pick up from our first video where Aman created a cluster. Uh, now what we're going to do is install a couple of add-ons. The first one is the CloudWatch Observability add-on, and we'll also install the SageMaker Hyperpod Task Governance add-on. So now what we're looking at is the dashboard for uh, SageMaker Hyperpod Task Governance and CloudWatch Observability. Let's take a look at the policies which we use to implement task governance. There's a few different components here that we need to set up. The first is the cluster policy. Now, this is comprised of uh, two settings. There's task prioritization and idle compute allocation. For task prioritization, you can use first come, first serve, um, or you can use task ranking. With task ranking, you can prioritize different tasks within your cluster. For example, inference may be a, a higher priority task than fine tuning. Um, for this example, let's move experimentation to the bottom. Um, in idle compute allocation, you can use either first come first serve or fair share, which will check against the team weight that we set up in the next step. So now let's set up the actual teams and their compute allocations. We'll give the compute allocation a name, for example, ML engineering quota policy and a description. Next, we'll set up the team name. This is also the name that will be used for their EKS namespace. For this, I will set up ENG for engineering. Next is the fair share weight. As I mentioned before, when you have fair share set for your idle compute allocation, you set up a fair share weight per team. Uh, and then when teams are vying for idle compute, their fair share weight is then checked to see who has priority. In this example, let's set the engineering team to fair share weight 100. We're also going to allocate this team six instances of MLG5 8x large. We'll also allow them to lend and borrow, meaning that other teams can borrow their compute as well. Next, we'll set up the borrow limit. So this is the 
uh, percentage against their allocated compute of which they can borrow idle compute. For example, if we set it up to 100%, they can borrow six additional instances of MLG 58 x large. So let's create this team. So jumping ahead, I have created a couple more teams. I've created a chatbot team as well as a team for our researchers. One thing to call out is that the chatbot team is on a don't lend policy, meaning that the compute that has been allocated to their team is reserved for them. Um, so the researchers and the ML engineering teams cannot uh, use their idle compute. Only their own team can use their idle compute. So now that we've set up our teams and policies, let's go ahead and submit some jobs. Uh, the first thing that we'll do is submit a job to the engineering team. So here you can see we have a manifest file uh, that's going to launch a PyTorch job uh, for the engineering team. If you recall, when we set up the team name, we also set up the uh, SageMaker managed uh, namespace. So here in our manifest file, we will include that namespace as well as the local queue and the priority class. So let's use kubectl to submit this job. In this job, we are going to have the engineering team request eight instances. And so this is going to be beyond their uh, allocated compute, meaning that they will be borrowing two nodes of idle compute from the research team. So now we've jumped ahead and our training job has started. You can see the GPU utilization metrics appearing real time in our dashboard. Let's take a look at what else we can see in this dashboard. We can view the GPU utilization over time, as well as some metrics about the team utilization. Here we can see that the engineering team is allocated six nodes, but they are currently utilizing eight nodes, thereby borrowing two nodes. We also have a graph to show allocation versus utilization, where you can see here that the engineering team is utilizing more than they're allocated, meaning that they are currently using some of the idle compute from another team. If we continue to scroll, we can also see historical patterns around uh, borrowing and utilization across teams. And we can also view another uh, task dashboard to see, um, based off of priority class, the different tasks that are running. So now that we have the engineering team borrowing compute, Let's see what happens when the research team reclaims their idle compute and asks to take their idle compute back. Now what we'll do is run a job with the uh, research team. So again, we have to include the namespace as well as the priority class, and we will submit this job to the research team. Now, when we take a look at the dashboard, we can see that the engineering team's training job has moved to suspended. This is because the research team has reclaimed their guaranteed compute. Uh, the idle compute that the engineering team was borrowing has now been given back to the research team, and now they can run their training job um, on their guaranteed compute. As you can see, they're currently running a job on the experimentation priority, which is the lowest priority class on our cluster policy. So let's take a look at what happens when they submit another job with a higher priority. In this example, we're going to submit a similar job, but with a higher priority class. Now that we have submitted a higher priority training job, you can see that the experimentation job has been moved to suspended. It's been preempted alongside the engineering team's uh, preempted job. So let's take a look at the dashboard to see what this looks like. Here we can see that the research team 
has a utilization of five GPUs. We can also see the same against our uh, GPU utilization versus allocation chart. And if we continue to scroll down, we can see the preempted jobs. So that concludes our demo of SageMaker Hyperpod Task Governance. To summarize, we set up governance policies, allocated compute quotas to each team, borrowed idle compute, and preempted lower priority tasks. Now let's move on to the third video in the series. My name is Nisha, and thank you for watching.